Now, we want to do the special case where there's only one root, and this root has a certain multiplicity. So this is a real theorem now. Let m be a positive integer, and let r be a non-zero complex number. Then the solution space s of the equation a minus r to the mth f of n is a m-dimensional subspace of v, and the following functions form a basis, r to the n n r to the n, n squared at the okay. Okay, now we've written this up before. And if all you wanted to know was how to apply these techniques, then you're checking your email or something. But now I'm claiming that we're actually going to prove this. Okay, and I say in the remark, there are three parts to the proof. The first part is showing that each of these functions is a solution. Second, is showing that every solution is a linear combination of these. And the third is showing that these are linearly independent. Okay, now when you've done that, when you establish that you have the property that you have a set of vectors and every vector in your space is a linear combination of them, that doesn't mean it's a basis. Because there might be duplication in there. There might be some you can throw away. But if they're linearly independent, then you can't throw any away. All right, so this is just the special case of our theorem, of our general theorem, when there's only one root. Okay, now, listen to this sentence carefully if, if, if you're listening. If you're not listening, don't listen. We already did the case m equals 1. We did the case m equals 1. We showed that if you take a minus r and apply it to a function and you get 0, then that function is a constant times r to the n. We, we did that with an induction argument. So the case m equals 1 is done. That's the base case in the induction. So now you want to assume that this is true for all the values up to some value of k and do the next one. And that requires the theorem about the non-homogeneous case. Let's see how that works. <laughs> 